This is a case of an aborted phaco four days ago. The surgeon had completed the capsular exit, but there was significant iris prolapse due to floppy iris syndrome, and the patient was referred to us. Some phenylephrine lidocaine mixture has been put into the anterior chamber. That's the main incision opened up with the Sinsky, and we're placing a couple of iris hooks just around the main incision to keep the iris back. Uh, Trapan blue is placed just to confirm the capsular excess, and you can see some loose cortical material being irrigated out of the anterior chamber. Uh, we will then proceed uh, to do some gentle hydrodissection and uh, fecal emulsification uh, is initiated. We're using here a phaco chop technique with a hemi flip. Uh, the first hemi section is brought into the iris plane and using torsional phaco at this point, uh, the hemi section is emulsified at the iris plane using the efficiency of the torsional phaco. Uh, we find this to be a very efficient procedure for uh, moderate uh, and softer lenses. We use longitudinal phaco to chop and to lollipop and bring the piece forward. And then we move to torsional phaco to emulsify uh, using fallibility uh, of the hemi section here as we remove it. Uh, before coming out of the eye, we're placing some viscoelastic under the incision just to keep the iris back, but not overfilling the anterior chamber. You start to see that there's some iris defects from the previous prolapse at the initial surgery. Uh, the IA is done here. We're always going into the eye and outside of the eye without irrigation gently coming out of the eye to avoid pulling the iris out and the iris hook that's been placed here uh, is keeping the iris back although one is loosened up here. The intraocular lens is then placed into the capsular bag uh, and the fecal part of the procedure has gone quite uneventfully. We place the haptic into the area temporarily to perhaps create a bit of an opacification in that area uh, due to the translumination defect that we're going to be concerned for photophobia. Uh, Myo call is put into the anterior chamber. You can see the retroillumination, uh, translumination here uh, from the iris TI translumination defects. We're using a tenoproline suture here to imbricate the area uh, of thinning. This will hopefully reduce the uh, likelihood of postoperative photophobia for this patient. Uh, note the carefully placed incisions. This is a tenoproline on that long, say, a four needle, facilitated with an iris forcep or micrograsper. Uh, we're now pulling the um, sutures out of the eye using the micro time forceps here. I'm de demonstrating here a technique uh, that's been called the McAhmed technique. It's a modification of the mechanical technique using these micro time forceps to uh, grab the suture and push it into the eye. We're looping around the long end and grabbing the short end. Keep the short end less than one corneal diameter length, uh, flattening the knot, making it into a ball, and pushing it now into the anterior chamber very carefully without. Uh, putting traction onto the iris. A uh, second microtire can be used as well here uh, to help bring the iris together and then we lock the suture after we bring up both ends uh, outside the eye. Typically a 3-1 or a 3-1-1 is used and we are locking these to make sure they don't move and a micro scissor is used to cut. We can turn a microscope light down on the Leica Proveo microscope and you can see the translumination present still in one area so we're going to use a second uh, suture pass. Here we're using a 27 gauge cannula through the anterior chamber to help dock the needle as you brought, it's brought into the eye to help prevent the needle from uh, catching any corneal fibers. Sometimes this happens and it makes it difficult, of course, because the suture is then caught into the cornea. We do the same as we come out with the docking approach as well. We now have that suture passed and we bring both ends out of the eye. The long end is looped around the micro tying forcep, uh, and then the uh, short end and the knot is pushed into the anterior chamber. Grab it close to the knot to control, and now you see we have a nicely imbricated um, iris defect. Uh, this is important as patient had iris prolapse, uh, at initial surgery with thinning of the iris, and this could create significant photophobia, and we're able to manage this aborted phaco with niawil in the bag as well as correction of the majority of their translumination defects.